YouTube, this is Justin, aka Demonic Sweaters, here with an Audacity thingy today, and what I'm going to be doing is actually, uh, I recorded some drum samples with my old Windows phone. This is a Nokia uh, Lumia 635 uh, that I used to use a few years ago, and uh, actually, you know, I was sad to see the Windows phones go. Uh, they really were kind of cool, they just didn't have a lot of apps, but the actual like Windows uh, phone OS... I always really liked. But anyway, what I did was I went into my drum room and I just recorded individual hits uh, with the Nokia phone. And it has kind of a uh, distorted kind of lo-fi quality and I thought that would be cool to make into a sample pack uh, just for like lo-fi type stuff. So anyway, what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna do this in Audacity. So I'm gonna switch over to the screen capture and then we'll get started there. Okie dokie. Well, first things first, we're going to need to open up Audacity, obviously. Okay, so let me set this to Jack Audio. And there we go. All right, so let me open up my file. Uh, what I did is I actually um, recorded it to the Nokia phone, like I said. And then I went to, um, I just uploaded it from the Nokia to the uh, Microsoft OneDrive and then downloaded it to my computer. So it's in here somewhere. Did I just go past it? Oh, it's right here. All right, so let's see what we got. Okay, that's the snare drum there in the first. Okay, so first things first, I wanna zoom in and also, actually, very first things first, is I want to highlight the entire track like that. And then I'm going to go to Effect. Then I'm going to go to Amplify. And it really doesn't even need that. So it looks like it's already set to the maximum level that it can be. And that's probably due to the auto gain control on the Nokia phone. But So what I'm going to do is just zoom in here really close. And I'm going to select this snare sample. Okay, and then I'm going to control C and copy that. And then I'm going to go here and go to add new track. So I'm going to go add a stereo track. I'm just going to paste this down here. So now I can work on it uh, apart from the rest of the uh, file. So I'm going to solo that. First off, let me save it too. So let's go to save project as. And then let's go to my audacity folder which is here then let's call this nokia 635 drum samples all right so now we have this uh this snare sample here and what i want to do though is actually just clean it up a little bit not too much. I just want to do a fade out on the tail here. So I'm just going to highlight the end of it right there. And then we're going to go to fade out. And now let's play it back. Highlight the whole area again. That sounds pretty cool to me. You know, of course, I could shorten that if I wanted to. Um, maybe what I'll do is I'll, I'll create two. So I'm going to use this one. First, let me zoom in a little bit more and just make sure that the very uh, front of it, I don't have too much extra on there. And just dial that back a little bit. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to File and then I'm gonna go to Export Selected Audio right here. Now we need to make a folder, so I'm going to go to my data drive. And somewhere in here, let's see if I already have a, a folder I can use. No samples folder, okay. So let's make a samples folder. And then I'm going to create Nokia drums. And this is going to be 
snare one. And I want to save it as a wave file, 16 bit. Then click save. And I can just leave this metadata blank because it really doesn't matter. All right, so now we exported that one little snippet uh, for the snare, for snare one. So now I'm going to unsolo the track again. And actually, another thing you could do here is you can go to uh, view and then go to track size and then fit height. So that way you can see everything and zoom back out a little bit. And I'm going to solo our first track so we don't hear that one down below. And I'm going to take another one of these snare hits here. That one's got... But that's okay. There's a little sound there at the, the end of that one, but I'm going to cut... I'm going to make this one a much shorter sound. So I'm going to copy this again, paste it somewhere down here, and then solo this track again. And now this time what I'm going to do is actually cut off a good deal of the end of that track, highlight it and delete, and let's zoom in again. Delete the front end there, and now I'm going to highlight more than half, go to effect, and then fade out. All right, now let's highlight the whole sample again. There, and so that's like a shorter snare sound. So let's go ahead and export this one the same way we did the other one. And now I'm going to go to Export Selected Audio again. And you can just click that and it'll automatically do the title and we can just change this to Snare 2 and click Save. Alrighty. And that's pretty much the process. I mean, I'm going to go through some more with you, but I'm not going to bore you to tears by doing every single one of them in the video because it's really not that difficult. But um, you could do other things too. So maybe I'll, well, actually I know what I wanted to do when I was listening to this back. The kick drum sound is a little funky. So that one's going to take a little bit more processing, I think. So let's go ahead and find that. Okay. So this one I notice is going to need a little bit of work. So I'm going to highlight one of these, copy it. Let's go back to the beginnings here. Just paste it down here. All right, so let's zoom back in. And I really don't want the kick to have that much of a tail. So what I'm going to do, let's see how much, how this sounds. That's still kind of too much. All right, that sounds pretty good. So I'm going to cut off all of this. Now I'm going to do my fade out again, like I did on the other ones. And let's cut off the tip. Okay, that's better. But now I want to, I actually want to make it a little bit bassier. So I'm going to go to effect and go to equalization. And let's give it a 100 hertz boost. And if we just click two little dots on either side of 100 hertz, we can raise that up right there and then go to preview. And it's a little, I don't know. I still, there's something weird about it. Maybe take out some of this mid range. There's a, there's a frequency in there I'm not crazy about. Let's take out some 500 hertz. A little better. And let's give it some more presence. So let's give it some 2000 hertz boost. There we go. Now it's starting to sound more like a, a kick drum. I think you could use a little more bass still. Maybe widen this a bit. Mm, I think that's too much. And I still want a little more presence. Too much mid-range, so let's bring this down here. 
getting there. I mean, of course, this isn't going to sound like a studio quality kick drum. That's not what I'm going for. I still want it to sound lo-fi lo and garagey, but I just want it to be able to uh, stand out in a mix. That's basically the main thing. There we go. That's starting to sound... Okay, that's starting to sound like something that I would enjoy. So let me go ahead and click OK here. And now that probably made the level too hot, so I'm going to go to Effect again and go to Amplify. And yeah, so it's not bring it down a little bit. Okay, now let's listen to it. All right, that sounds pretty cool. And let's go to Export. Oops, sorry. No, I did that wrong. have to go to Export selected audio and now we're going to do kick mm, do i want to do two kicks or just one uh, let's just leave it simple we'll, we'll keep just one kick don't want to go too crazy then you have too many options when you're actually making music so okay so the kick drum is done and now what i'm going to do is actually finish the the rest of these up on my own and then after I finish it up, I'll come back on the video and we'll see what we can do with them. All right, so I got all the samples finished and I started loading them up into a Reaper project here. Now, one of the things I was thinking uh, originally is I wanted to drop them into Ableton and put them in a drum rack, which you absolutely could do and that would be very easy. But I'm in my Linux system right now, so I figured I would do something different and uh, put them into Reaper. Now, what this is, what you're looking at right here, this is actually really, really cool. Um, Ableton has a feature called the Drum Rack, which some of you may be uh, familiar with, where you can drag and drop samples onto the little drum rack, and it's very easy to use with a pad controller. And uh, I was looking for something similar uh, to that in Linux, and I came across this really, really cool Reaper template uh, right here that basically allows you to do a very similar type thing as the Ableton drum rack. And I'll post a link for this down below. And uh, what it is, now let me just show you real quick. Uh, basically, it gives you, let me close the effects window, but it gives you a, a master track with all of the uh, sequencing, MIDI sequencing you can do for the drums right here, but then it splits all the individual samples up into uh, basically having their own channel. And the way it does that is if we click on the effects window here, we can see all the different uh, sampler windows. And now this is really cool. I could, let me just play a couple of the samples and you can hear. So, as you can tell, I, I loaded in some of those samples that I made. And actually, uh, back on that, they I really like how they came out. They sound you know, pretty much how I thought, which is lo-fi, old school, uh, crunchy. They sound really, really neat. But anyway, so anyway, I'm getting kind of a little bit sidetracked here, but it's all related. But this thing, the snare, okay, let's click on snare here. And if we want to change this sample... It's actually really easy. Uh, we can just go here, because remember I created that long snare hit too. Uh, where is that? I think that's snare one, which is right here. I just drag this into there, and now that'll automatically switch that sample out. And now there's that long snare sound, and then I also made a flam one. And let's switch it back to the regular Snare 2, I guess, is the most normal sounding snare. Okay. And what I did is I went ahead and created a little sequence. It's nothing crazy or complicated. It's just a basic drum beat. But just so you can hear some of these samples. So let me play it back.
All right, so yeah, I, I really like how they came out. It's kind of like almost sounds like an old Lin drum or something like that. And uh, there's really no processing at all, except for the processing I did on the kick drum, which you saw, which was no more, no more than just EQ, uh, but no effects processing. There's trimming and fading and stuff like that. But all the grittiness and like, uh, you know, kind of pseudo distorted quality, that all comes from being sampled on the uh, Lumia 635 phone. And uh, what's really cool about also this uh, Reaper setup here is since you have all the drums on indiv individual channels, you can pan them individually as well as add effects, in effects, effects individually. So let's go on the snare and let's put in like a reverb or something on the snare. Uh, let's see, a room. Yeah, let's try one of these presets. Let's hear how that sounds. Oh wow, crazy. Now let's try some effect on the kick, maybe like a delay, like a slap back delay or something. Anyway, you get the idea. You, you can do individual processing on each drum, and you can add different samples onto different channels, and I didn't use all the samples I had made. I actually, there's some more that I had created from that uh, pack, but uh, this is all that there is. There's snare, flam, uh, ride bell, camber crash, uh, bell cymbal, kinetic crash, mini china, open hi-hat, closed hi-hat, ride floor tom rack tom kick snare two and snare one so that sample pack will be available to download i'll post a link down below and you can get that and also also post a link to the reaper template so if you want to use these in reaper it's very easy to do it just like i did it in this video and then these samples are wor they'll work in anything you can use them in lmms or uh, milky tracker or ableton live or whatever you want so anyway Thanks for watching. Hopefully you liked the video. You find these samples useful. If you do, click the thumbs up, the bell icon. Sorry for the dog barking in the background. My name is Justin. I'm Demonic Sweaters. I make all kinds of videos like this, as well as release music on the web at anthillrecordings.bandcamp.com. And my Patreon is patreon.com slash demonic sweaters. Thanks for watching. Have a great day, everybody.